Hey guys, it's Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. This is our project today. Got this adorable little pocket card for you. All right, so let me tell you about the Stampin' Up! supplies that you need to make this project. Um, I went ahead and colored ahead of time, but we're going to do the plaid together. So I'm going to jump right in and get started here. And let me show you what we used. I've got my Buffalo Check my Stamparatus, and I've got a couple of inks for the plaid. And I'm gonna just kind of do this in groups. So we're gonna do the plaid with Bermuda Bay, Pumpkin Pie, and Smoky Slate. So one Stampin' Pad, two Stampin' Rights, Stamparatus, and Buffalo Chuck. That's for the background. All right, something else that I wanna just draw your attention to, I've got my Rooted in Nature stamp set, and my Nature's Roots dies and I went ahead and stamped this leaf an old olive and then on old olive and die cut it out I did that to just save us a little bit of time I loved how this leaf shape kind of mimicked the shape of the leaves in the back of the truck so that's why I chose that one as an embellishment so that one's all done for us um, I didn't grab my uh, beautiful bouquet I think it's called framelits but I cut the little tag from there and I cut the little heart from the well-written dies so there's a little pumpkin pie heart I did those ahead of time for us I've got my stitched rectangle dies here we're gonna use this I think this one's the third largest I'll put the measurement so you get the right one and I cut that already out of very vanilla for us Let's see, since we're talking about some of the pieces already, I'll show you these. Got a one and a quarter inch circle punch from Very Vanilla. That one's retired. I do believe that the layering circles does one and a quarter now, though. So you can get that out of layering quarter or layering circles also. And I got one and three eighths inch scallop from Pumpkin Pie. I did that one ahead for us. Um, the other pieces I have here, I've got a crumb cake card base. It's eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and a quarter. And then I've got a half a sheet of very vanilla. We're gonna do our plaid on this half sheet. I like the half sheet and then cut it down so you get a nice straight square plaid that'll go the whole background of a card. All right, so those are our pieces. What else do I have here to share with you? A couple more um, ink pads. I've got my old olive. I used that one on the leaves, so you won't see me use that one again. I've got my basic gray. We're gonna use the basic gray for our happy harvest sentiment. Susan loves that little pocket. If you're just joining us, this is what that's all about. So a little pocket card. And you can fit a little tea bag in there. A little Ghirardelli square will fit in there and a gift card will fit in there. As long as you keep your adhesive real low, you can fit a gift card behind the truck. So a couple of things that you can put in that pocket. And if you didn't want the pocket, you could just do the partial die cutting that we're gonna do and then put some dimensionals behind there. It would be cute little dimensional truck. I would just slide that up a little bit and center it better. All right, so that explains our pocket. I've got some tea bags for that. Got some linen thread for my embellishment. The stamping of the truck will be done with Memento Tuxedo Black, and I've already colored one, so I'm just gonna show you the Stampin' Blends I used. Since we're building the plaid, I didn't wanna take up your whole day building the plaid and coloring. I guess that's an exaggeration. It wouldn't take all day, but it takes a little bit. So I've already colored my little truck here. We'll go through the partial die cutting but I colored him with the pumpkin pie combo, old olive combo, smoky slate combo. These will be listed on the project sheet in case you wanna color just like I did. I've got the light basic black. I've got dark pool party, light Bermuda Bay, dark so saffron, and then I've got a color lifter here too. So there's our little colored truck and the supplies that we use to color him. This features very prominently the Stampin' Up! Ride With Me bundle. I love this new bundle from the annual catalog. We've got the Ride With Me stamp set. It's a 19-piece photopolymer stamp set. 
These little pack of cards will be great for Christmas or for birthdays. And we're using the truck ride dies. When you buy these two products together from the annual catalog, you save 10% on them. It's still in its first publication, so it's available with a bundle discount. Uh, let's see here. Did I go through everything we're going to use today? I think I did. And so I'd like to start with the plaid. Have you guys ever done plaid with, from your buffalo check? It's really kind of a cool effect. And I love how it makes this buffalo check stamp even more versatile. So I'm going to slide in my stamparatus here. A couple of things I've already done ahead of time was I put my stamp so that it runs nice and straight with the lines. And let me, show, well, I'll show you how I do that. We're just gonna start fresh. So I take the stamp, uninked, and I line it up so that it's very square. Use that grid paper. I love the Stamparatus grid paper. When you've got it very square and about an inch from the hinges, you go ahead and pick it up. Now this is gonna help you get a very square, straight, Plaid, but easily because there's nothing I hate more than the maths and geometry and rulers and straight lines and adding the maths I don't like the maths so this will make it very easy you got your stamp on the stamparatus straight and then you're gonna bring in a half a sheet of cardstock and there's a couple of reasons for the half a sheet but one is because then you can cut down and get perfectly straight plaid again. So I've got my cardstock so that it's against the plumb line here straight, but we're not putting it all the way up into the corner. We're going to need that extra wiggle room, but you do want to make sure, there's a little glare from my lamp here, you do want to make sure that the top edge of the stamp and the bottom edge of the stamp extend past the edges of the cardstock. So do you see that? Let me tip it up just in case the glare is getting it. All right, so it's plumb. It's straight against the line here on the hinge edge. Now, because we've got a big piece of cardstock that we're not gonna cut down, we have room way off in the right side here for our magnet. Our magnet will not get in our way while we're making our plaid, all right? So I'm gonna do a Bermuda Bay Buffalo check on the vanilla cardstock. I'm just gonna ink up the stamp completely. And then just take your time and do very light tap. Don't mash the ink pad onto the stamp. You'll squish out those little um, details, those little hash lines, and you'll make a big mess. You also wanna go round and round with light little taps because then you don't have any square edges where the ink pad starts and stops. All right, see how my magnet is completely out of the way over here? And I can get a good image. Now you take your time and you walk your fingers across the stamparatus and then spend a little extra effort just making sure that the middle of your image gets a little extra pressure. Now we can lift and look, and if we like it, we can be done. But if we want a little bit more solid plaid, we can go back with another light coat of ink and because the Stamparatus keeps the perfect position, we can just go through and make sure any of those hazy little areas get an extra coat of ink. I almost always use the Buffalo Check in the Stamparatus because if I don't get a solid enough image, it's easy enough to just add a little more ink. See that? All right, so we've got our Buffalo Check. Now let's make it plaid. We're gonna use our Stamparatus for that too. So the Stamparatus, we've set up our stamp so that it was square. We've got our plumb line, top and bottom. Now we're gonna bring in a ruler. I use a metal edge ruler. And we're gonna start with our pumpkin pie stamp and right, we're gonna use the brush tip. Now what you wanna do to make this plaid is Using the, the plumb line of the Stamparatus, using that top edge, you're going to bring your ruler in. You're going to eyeball about halfway. You can use your grid lines, top and bottom, to help you with that. And then when you've got about halfway, you're going to draw a wide line 
with your orange marker straight off top and bottom all right so let's do that a few more times we're going to kind of eyeball halfway and then using that brush tip we're going to top to bottom it's looking a little miami dolphins right now i have to say see how easy that makes perfectly straight lines you still have to eyeball about half but you don't have to worry that your lines are going to be all wonky all right then we're going to go the other way using the same thing we've got our stamparatus edge here and when you put the flat edge of the ruler against that flat edge you've got a 90 degree and a perfectly level straight line each time now i'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this with the orange and then we're going to bring in a little bit more detail with our soft suede okay so we've gotten to our magnet so what we'll do is just slide this guy all the way up to the top nothing moved you don't want to move your cardstock at all continue with your lines now if you don't get center perfect don't worry there's so much beautiful going on with this plaid nobody's going to notice that one of the lines was slightly off the center so don't stress once you get all the details in, it's going to be beautiful no matter what and with the rails the guide of the stamparatus you got a um, really good guides there all right so done with the pumpkin pie but before you move to the smoky slate you want to take your chamois and use that to clean your metal ruler just make sure that you don't have any pumpkin pie ink on that ruler and I've got a work pad over here and I'm just going to drag the edge of the ruler on the work pad if you had a paper towel you could dry the ruler at this point too all right so we're using the same idea here we've got the ruler against the edge of the stamparatus which gives us a nice square plumb line and we're just bringing in those smoky slate details now I've been meaning to do this for a very long time this plaid design so thanks for hanging with me while we do this I hope that you'll get your stamparatus and buffalo check out and give it a try um, you can do any sort of um, color combination here it'll be great for with Christmas coming up and black orange and purples or black orange and green it would be awesome for Halloween and pastels it'll be beautiful for Easter but you've got your very own designer series paper here. And this definitely makes enough for two cards. You can cut this piece in half if you wanted to. All right, so that's our vertical. Now our horizontal, we'll do the same thing. Butt your ruler up against the edge. Go right below your pumpkin pie line, back and forth, and then right above. And use that stamparatus to get those nice straight lines. This one isn't, I had said, if they're not perfectly in the middle, don't worry about it. Nobody's ever gonna even notice. This one's not perfectly in the middle. In fact, it's really close. But when I take the ruler away and you look at this, all you're gonna see is a pretty plaid pattern. You're not gonna see that one place, especially since most of the, the lineup is all just done for you in the Stamparatus. All right. Susan says, what a great idea to add a little something extra to the plaid. I'm definitely going to use this idea. Well, thank you, Susan. I hope that you will. Um, I'd love to see what you do with it. It's the perfect season. It is, it is flannel season. We're coming into fall here. I've noticed some yellow leaves on trees. I hate it. But at the same time, fall is my favorite season. I just wonder where summer went. It went so fast this year. But it is definitely becoming pumpkin spice and flannel season that's for sure all right we got two more little lines to make here now with this particular card if you do your plaid you line it up just like this then you have enough room left over on this half a sheet to cut your stitched rectangle and punch your vanilla circle so you can get all the pieces right out of this one if you do the plaid then you can cut your rectangle from over here and punch your circle down here all right there's our plan. Hey, Benny. Benny says, hey, Benny's my biggest canine fan. How you doing, Benny? You want to make some plaid with me next time, buddy? All right. So there's our plaid, our stamparatus. We're good. Let me get a trimmer and we'll cut it down to size. All right. So when I cut this down to size, what I want to do is first on the edge here, the very edge, stamped edge, I want to bring that up 
and just cut a hair off. Did you guys hear the news? Stampin' Up! has got a new trimmer. It'll be available for demonstrators to purchase before the end of the year. So being a demonstrator is just more fun. I'm just saying. Extra, extra promotion is going on right now. You get $99 starter kit. You can pick $155 worth of products of your choice for $99. It's awesome. All right. So I've now flipped it and lined up to four inches. And I'm going to cut off. And what that does is that's going to give you plaid that's relatively equal. You've almost got a full band of that darker stripe on both ends. You see that? Now I'm going to flip this. This was five and a half. I'm going to cut this one to five and three eighths. Our goal is four by five and a quarter. We want a um, quarter inch border of our crumb cake card base, but we want it equal. So we're going to cut at five and three eighths, rotate, and then five and a quarter. So that's how you're going to get a card front that's perfectly matted and has a nice balanced plaid pattern. All right, so five and a quarter. Did you see that? Whew, I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Next up, I'm going to take my very vanilla stitch rectangle. We can cut it right out of there if you want to. And I'm gonna stamp this one with my chalk. So I need my Stampin' Pierce map, my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I've got the pumpkins from Ride With Me. And I've got the truck all blocked up. What you wanna do with this dude, we're gonna do our truck first we're going to ink up i bring the ink pad to the truck because it's kind of a big stamp and i focus on those details that are right in the middle and then we're going to stamp it using that stitch line kind of like a road we want to make sure that it's nice and level about a quarter of an inch from that bottom stitch line good morning deborah Irene said good job thank you so much i was pretty proud of myself i love that piece of plaid paper all right, then we're going to stamp in our pumpkins in the bed. You've got to put the pumpkins in the bed. And so I've got the phone between me and the paper. So I'm trying to do this kind of looking over the phone, through the phone. Let's see if we can do it. Whew, it's even easy to line up when you've got a phone between you and your project. All right, so then we're going to talk about some partial die cutting what you want to do with this dude to get this little pocket established with as little effort as possible, we're going to do a little partial die cutting. So, let me grab my so I got a big shot here. Can't wait till Stampin' Up! gets a new die cutting machine. It'll be awesome. Our cutting pads here, adapter and platform. And we're going to bring this little dude. Are you ready for this? Heidi's from Norway. That's so cool. Thanks for watching, Heidi. All right, I've got my die. Now this die from the truck ride dies cuts out this pumpkin image entirely. But we don't want that. We don't want this to be its own little image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line this up and here's a little tip. I know that some people are having trouble lining up the new Stampin' Up! dies. So we're gonna line this guy up by making sure that all of our little stems, all of our little leaves, and that line across the bottom of our truck all touch the inner edge of the die. There is no little white border, and that's different from the Sizzix dies that we used to have. Now we're gonna take this truck and we're gonna bring it all the way to the edge of our cutting pad. And we're just gonna balance it on the edge. We're gonna bring in the top plate and the idea here is that this die, the bottom blade of this die, is actually on the beveled edge of your cutting plate. So what happens is when you run this through the machine, there's not gonna be enough pressure to cut that bottom edge of the die. All right, so let me get that lined up. Okay, we should be good on the bevel. Did you hear that? We only had a click, not a click, click. And that means our partial die cutting was successful. So let's take this little dude and show you how it's going to be. I've colored it all up. And when you leave that edge 
hanging off the machine, it'll cut all the way around the pumpkins, but it'll stop when it hits that beveled edge. You see that? You can do that with the trees, you can do that with the balloons. And there's our, now I've already colored my image ahead of time, but we do need to add a little bit more room for our pocket. So I'm gonna grab a cutting mat. I'm gonna knock you guys over trying to get it. All right. And I have an X-Acto knife. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna just carry on this cut. So we're gonna pick up from where the pumpkin's cut and we're going to just trace with an X-Acto knife along the top of the truck. And then, here, let me show you. We're gonna go straight down the windshield. And just take your time and make a smooth cut and then about an eighth to a quarter of an inch along the hood. And now you've got this whole little pocket that lifts. Do you guys see that? All right, so we got Happy Harvest. I'm gonna cover up Happy with my cellophane tape. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my basic gray stamping pad. I'm gonna ink up only Harvest, and the tape there is gonna make it easy to do that. So I'll just ink up Harvest, take off the tape, and then we'll stamp Harvest at the bottom of the circle. Good, then we're gonna rinse our stamp, use your chamois, and then we're gonna use that same piece of cellophane tape. This time we're gonna cover up Harvest. Sorry guys, I'm trying to do it through the phone, but I can't tell if I got the whole Harvest covered. All right, then we're gonna ink up just Happy, take off the tape, and then we're gonna line Happy above Harvest. I'm hoping for the best here because I'm doing it through the phone. Ah, not bad. A little off to the right on the happy. I would have preferred it a little more centered. <laughs> Carol says exact. Carol says exacto knives are not her friend. Never could get the hang of it. Um, Carol, if I recall correctly, you're not a bad fussy cutter, right? Do you like to fussy cut? Because if you do like to fussy cut, all you have to do is get a nice sharp pair of scissors, good snips. You know, the Stampin' Up! paper snips are the best. And you could actually take your little paper snips and you could get in there where it started and then just start your line. So if you're better with scissors, give that a try. And if I recall correctly, I think you like to fussy cut. Let me know if I'm wrong. All right, so there's our little pocket and our greeting. You know what I forgot to grab? My little strip of um, crumb cake corrugated cardstock. I had a whole bunch of scraps off of something. So we did some crumb cake things and we had some extras and then I worked it into another project but I worked in a smaller piece. So I had all of these hanging around in my scrap bag. Let's see, so it's about a half an inch and it's probably four and three quarters by a half before it goes into the corrugator. I took it for granted because it came out of my scrap bin. Carol can't believe I remember she likes to fussy cut. I don't know. I'm telling you, I do this because I like you guys. I have so much fun. I feel like I'm getting to know you. I hope you guys feel like you're getting to know me too. All right. So I'm going to take my happy harvest and just use a little snail adhesive. You can use multi-purpose liquid glue here too. And we're going to center that one. Um, what happens is when I get too many pieces, I get a little anxious. So we're going to start putting some of these pieces together. I'm going to take my truck. And I should have my multi-purpose liquid glue here. I'm going to do multi-purpose liquid glue right along the stitches. Just a thin bead. And this one's a little bit bigger than my panel, but that's okay. I can trim off the excess, but it's supposed to look kind of like road, so don't cover your tires. Use the tires as a guide. Let that dry for a second, then we'll trim off the excess. See, that's why I get nervous when I've got too many pieces, because I'm going to lose them. Here's my little tag. And I'm going to adhere my heart. I'll just a little multi-purpose liquid glue right in the center. I love this combination. When I got a card that just needs a little something, a little, a little something, I tend to grab this little tag and this little heart. You can also use a little heart from the cookie builder punch if you've still got that one. Tag the little hole wouldn't come out. All right. 
Now, a little linen thread here. I'm gonna just tie some long tails and tie it on because once I put it on the card, I'm gonna tie the bow. I was having trouble, it kept covering my sentiment. I had to untie it and then retie it so that it wouldn't cover the sentiment. So we're just not gonna play that game this time. We're just gonna cut off about, I don't know, maybe eight inches, tie it to the tag, then put it aside for a second. It's probably set up enough where we can trim off the excess. All right, you ready? Let's get this card together. We're gonna take our gorgeous plaid. We're brilliant, by the way, look at that plaid. Now you've got plaid paper in any color combination that fits your project and it'll never run out. As long as you've got the buffalo check, of course. So we're gonna center this on our crumb cake card. See how nice and straight it is and it kind of starts and stops with equal bands of that wider plaid design. That's why the Stamparatus and that's why starting it in the middle like we did is so important now. You can do tear and tape here or you can use some snail if you still have it, but you or um, fast fuse if you still have it, or a little red line tape. Something strong because this pocket's gonna get a workout. We're gonna go ahead and put tear and tape down the left side across the bottom on that corrugated. Now you gotta be very careful here. You don't want to block this part of your pocket. So if you have to, you'll go off the edge just a little bit. So you can go a little crooked with your tear and tape. But don't block up that pocket. Go straight up the edge. And what I'll do, see, you can see that I put my tear and tape on a little sideways. I'm going to peel the release. And then right here, what I'll do is just fold it back. But it doesn't impede the pocket at all. Then same thing with the other three sides. Peel the release and let's get it stuck to the card. Now because you're gonna put something inside this pocket, you're going to go really low and to the right here. If you were gonna do this just as a card, you could add some dimensionals here. It would look all popped up, but you would do more center with your design. So we're gonna go low and to the right and work down that tape. Now, there's your little pocket. You can put your gift card in, or you can put your little tea bag in there. I like my salted caramel tea. Isn't that cute? Ghirardelli Square will fit in there too. All right, let's finish up. We got just some little details to do here. I want some Stampin' Dimensionals for the back of my tag. I'm gonna do one here and one here and one here. And that way I don't have kind of a double bump where the corrugated is high. Do you see what I'm saying? We're gonna put that guy on at kind of a fun little angle. I did it so that it kind of covered the back bumper. Um, Diane said no adhesive across the top, avoiding the pumpkins and the roof of the truck. You could put a little strip of adhesive there. Um, I, You know what, as a matter of fact, maybe I will just in case somebody tries to jam the gift card in. Um, but you can do a little strip, just avoid the, the roof and the pumpkins. So that works too. I don't know if I put any across the top of my other one. Let's see. Nope, that one's glued down. So yep, across the top is a good idea. Just keep the adhesive free of this little line here. All right, we've got multi-purpose liquid glue. Good question, Diane. Thank you. Um, if, a, if you've got a gift card too and somebody really jams, they could get it um, underneath the wrong layer. So doesn't hurt to add a little glue there. All right, then I'm gonna bring my leaves in and I want them to kinda cross the boundaries a little bit. Go off the plaid just a bit. Not off the edge of the card though. Then I've got a half a dimensional here and I'm gonna put it on my tag in this kinda upper. Okay, so it's on the very 
what is that? If you're looking at it from the front, it's in the very bottom left corner. If you're looking at it from the back, it's in the, that's where you want your adhesive because that's going to hang off the top of your little happy harvest. And then I tied my bow last because I just felt like the bow kept covering the words if I tied it on the tag. But once it was on the card, it kind of wanted to go um, horizontal, kind of the orientation of the card instead of the orientation of the tag and covering the greeting. So tie a little bow and trim up the excess. Linda says, love these cards. The vintage truck and the pumpkins are so cute. Thank you. I went for that like... Um, that Ford blue, you know, and that kind of inspired the whole thing. Once you put the orange pumpkins in, it inspired the colors for my plaid. I got my little salted caramel tea bag. They're their Bigelow teas. And then here's a cinnamon stick. I'll be looking for like a pumpkin spice. I'm sure that that's coming very soon too. And there they are. I'll be looking for pe for peppermint for the winter time. Heidi said, brilliant idea to make a nice image become a pocket. Hey, Thanks. Diane said adorable. Thank you, ladies. And the plaid is amazing. I'm pretty proud of the plaid. I have to just be honest about that. All right, you guys. If you've got questions about the buffalo check plaid, the partial die cutting that we did today, if there's anything I can do to help you stay crafty, you can email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. Have a great weekend, everybody.